Good morning. Uh, what I want to review with you is the discoveries that I've seen in the western states, mostly in Colorado and New Mexico. Uh, these are discoveries that have all, or finds that have all been made in the last calendar year. In September uh, of last year, a, uh, a family of diggers in the Crystal Peak area uh, opened up a uh, Smoky Quartz Amazonite pocket and the late stage minerals that was encrusting a lot of the specimens consisted of clusters of Bertrandite crystals. They found in all a uh, beer flat. Uh, I got to see the specimens just after they were found and they have, so what you're seeing there is a specimen that has not yet been cleaned. One of the specimens that will definitely be a lot more attractive after it's cleaned is consists of, again, these uh, groups of uh, Bertrandite crystals sitting on top of smoky quartz and Amazonite. And as of this time, none have been sold yet. On Mount Intero, uh, on the uh, Cardwell block of claims, which is on the south knob of Mount Intero, uh, Craig Cardwell operates that where individual prospectors and diggers can work on that claim for basically 50% of what they find. And as such, he's had quite a few people digging there, and he's made several discoveries this past uh, uh, summer season, which is basically July and August. Here you see only half of the best crystals from a Sherry Topaz pocket. Uh, they are nice color, well-formed, sharp faces, but if you were to leave them out in the sun or display them in a case, they will fade. Here, here is a close-up of the largest one. Still sharp faces, nice color. Uh, there's uh, fragments that they had collected that would facet. Uh, as you saw in the last picture, there was a faceted stone in the upper upper right, uh, but they are definitely very attractive, and topaz is one of the rarer minerals found on Mount Antero. They did hit a large pocket of uh, aquamarine that contained, the pocket contained bunches of, of flawed, unfacetable material as well as uh, an abundance of facet grade material without terminations including several uh, that are terminated. Uh, here again you're only seeing one half of the best crystals. Here's here is a close-up of one particular one. It's, a, it's the only scepter that was found. Uh, Craig is still diligently working to try to find the broken bottom half of this one. To, and if he's successful, this will be a very attractive, larger, septive aquamarine from Mount Antero. They also hit a large pocket of lightly etched aquamarines that were encrusted with agillaria and uh, phenakites ranging from small ones to uh, slightly larger than average phenakites. This is, is one of the better specimens. It too has not yet been cleaned. Here is uh, one that shows the agillaria uh, off quite nicely as the white feldspar crystals on the right. And on the left, you can see the uh, large phenakite that's sitting on top of a lightly etched uh, aquamarine. About three years ago, the California mine, which is a molybdenite quartz vein with a burl that's near Mount Antero, it's accessed by the same roads. Uh, a consortium of, of several people, uh, with the two principals being Lowell Hicks, who has the largest share, and Mark Kravanek, the uh, jeweler in Salida, uh, having shares, they got together and they um, mucked out the collapsed entrance, retimbered it, 
put in an, uh, the mine rails for the uh, entrance area so they could use it to use the inside rails uh, with a uh, cart and they are still working to muck out two collapse features inside the vein. Now this is gated uh, with a lock gate so uh, this is not a case of where you can drive a truck up and pull the gate out because there's there's no road access to the uh, to the entrance area. Here you see uh, Lowell with uh, a mine helper where they're mucking out the debris. The, the muck is from collectors previously digging in this thing for over 50 years. That muck is screened for the uh, gem burl uh, fragments that are that are lost within it because the early miners just used one headlamp and they did not get everything from the pockets that were encountered. I was able to go back with Lowell to the uh, back of the mine where they stopped mining. It's pristine at the very far end and you can see the uh, thickness of the of the vein and you with a six inch scale on it. Along the edge of the vein is where the molybdenite flakes are found and in the center of the vein which is almost pure quartz you have little bugs with uh, jemmy burl crystals in it and this is the, the, the really the economic mineral that can be found in this mine. Phil Simmons and Aaron Devanthal are always on the lookout for uh, specimens that uh, are hard to find or, or have been newly collected. And they were able to find, met a guy who was able to uh, sell them some newly, relatively newly discovered uh, specimens that had come from the Sardinia stope. These are yellow to mustard colored uh, smithsonite in uh, small to large pieces and they have provided uh, attractive and unusual, because of their color, uh, smithsonite from the uh, Kelly mine. Uh, these specimens which are, have been polished are, were offered at the uh, Tucson show in February and uh, they make a very nice attractive brown color uh, on top of uh, the matrix. Also at the Tucson show, Pala International uh, displayed a some spe large Elbaite specimens from the Tourmaline Queen mine. This is the mine that produced the steamboat matrix specimen in about 1910. That's that's in the Smithsonian. Since that that 1910-1915 period. The mine has not really been known for any meaningful bugs adding specimens to collectors. Uh, this is probably the best pocket that's been found in a hundred years. Uh, these are large uh, elbaites with good color and of course they have been cleaned. Here's one of the better uh, matrix pieces. These were all uh, for sale uh, at the uh, Tucson show in February. In northern New Mexico, uh, Fred Ortega, who is a uh, active field collector for from various uh, the mineral localities in the Taos area, has continued digging in the emerald locality uh, that's been known up there. The emerald is found in Matrix, so it's just opaque, large, deep emerald-colored crystals. Here's one of the ones that he had had to show. This is his largest emerald that he had, uh, that he was showing to people at the uh, Socorro uh, Symposium in November. Uh, as you can see, it's nicely colored and quite large, but they're opaque with no gemmy spots, so they're they're not uh, really, cab you know, gem quality grade. And from an in an infrequent area of collecting. It's uh, Larimer County. It's the Crystal Mountain Pegmatite Field. Storm Mountain is just one of the larger ones. These pegmatites all have uh, a small amount of 
uraninite and uraninite mineral products, alteration products, in them. And people with uh, gamma ray scintillators have been able to occasionally find uh, very attractive bright orange and yellow uh, gummite alteration minerals. Uh, this is one of the best that I have seen come out so far found uh, during uh, this summer recovered from the dump there are not a lot of collectors out here chasing after these so there probably will be a scattering more of these to, to be found and with that I'd like to thank you for your attention this is uh, the spe the new things that I have seen come out of uh, out of the areas that I'm familiar with thank you